Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get these great interviews such as I have today with John Karabi of the Dead Daisies. How are you doing, John? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Hey, man, I'm doing awesome. I, I have to tell you something. I got a phone call about 10 minutes ago uh, from a publicist. Uh, it, it, this this person is pretty damn big in the industry I've been going after. Like, you're big as well. But they said, hey, can you do so-and-so uh, at 11 o'clock? And you know what I said? What? I said, I'm sorry, man, but I've got crabs. <laughs> How are you doing, man? That that That's not something you want to tell somebody at a bar. Okay, next. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So you're in Philly right now. You're on tour with uh, Winger and... Um, Tom Kiefer. And Tom Kiefer, right on. Both great bands um, or, you know, great musicians for sure. Um, but we're here to talk about uh, the Dead Daisies and you're back with the Daisies. I remember speaking with you some years ago. And after I realized that um, Glenn had come into the picture and uh, you had left the picture... I was um, flabbergasted, to say the least, because I listened to you and the albums that you did with the Daisies, and I thought, and no no offense to Glenn, but I thought you were, were a better voice. Um, how did things transpire for you leaving the Daisies and then rejoining? Because I know that you and David Lowy have always had a good uh, relationship. Yeah, I, I, I didn't leave on bad terms, and it was it was honestly, I don't know how to say this without sounding a little... Uh, you know, I, I don't, whatever, but it was, it was weird. Like when I first joined the band, we did a record called a uh, revolution. And as soon as we put that thing out, uh, it just kind of blew up and we were doing all these festivals and, uh, you know, and, and it just got to the point where it was like, do a record, go on tour and just tour like, you know, nonstop. And then back home, do another record, go back on, out on tour. And, uh, you know, in my time with the band, we did four records and I was in the band from 2015 to 18. Um, and, you know, I, I was just kind of burnt, but we all were like management, the band, uh, we were all just getting really burnt. So, uh, you know, between that and then I had my son, Ian, in my other ear telling me how much I sucked on a daily basis because my solo band wasn't doing any shows. He plays drums with me on my solo band. Okay. Um, I just went to the guys and I said, listen, man, like, I really appreciate everything, but I, I just want to, I just need to get off this carousel for a second, catch my breath and, um, you know, and I went, I, I, you know, I went out and I did a bunch of shows in 2019 on my own, went to Australia, went to South America with my band. I did a bunch of acoustic shows and I uh, just kind of worked a lot, but worked at my own pace. Um, and then unfortunately, nobody saw COVID coming. Um, so we all sat around for two or three years, you know, playing with ourselves. and. Um, you know, I, I, I made time, I, I made use of that time. I, I wrote a book and I took Pro Tools classes to learn how to record myself. Uh, again, I was nervous. Uh, everything was at a standstill. So, um, you know, and then this year the guys called me, uh, I, I don't know, February, March or something like that. And they said, hey, Glenn's going to go out and he's going to do his Deep Purple things and another Black Country Communion record. Are you rested? And I was like, yeah, I feel great. They're like, do you want to come back? And I was like, absolutely. Uh, I never I never had an issue with the band or anybody in the band or anybody involved with the band. It was just me wanting just to catch my breath for a second because it was it was it was crazy. You know what I mean? The schedule was just, it was awesome on one hand, but it was, it was a lot, you know what I mean? So right. I took a couple of off and, and I feel great. Um, 
you know, and, and here we are, man. I'm happy to be back. I'm, ha- I'm excited to get back out on the road again with the guys. And, and um, the one thing David Lowy did tell me when we, we, we discussed everything at dinner and he said, look, I, I, I want to get back out. I want to get back into the fun and the swing of things. And he goes, I, I want to be busy, but I not, not so busy that we're killing ourselves at the same time. So I'm like, count me in. I'm, I'm all good. I'm ready to go. Yeah. So here we. Well, speaking of David Lowy, um, very influential Australian. Um, I'd like to say mogul. I mean, he does everything. But when you guys go for dinner, is it Dutch, or does he pick up the tab? <laughs> no, you know what's funny. I, I, I don't really care. Um, D- David's a good. He's a really good dude. And if, if you know you would never know sitting at a bar with the guy uh he's there there's no ego there's no bullshit there's no attitude um you know so there's been a few times like what like a lot of time we would we would finish a show back when we were touring together we would finish a show and we would just go have a couple of drinks and inevitably he would you know, he would grab the tab and he would take care of everything. But I, I just said, you know what, dude, let me buy you a fucking drink sometime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever. It's no big deal. Um, he's he's just a good dude. You know, I, I don't really give a shit about the money thing. I, I could care less. He's just a nice guy. And, uh, you know, he's funny. He's got a great sense of humor. So I love just hanging out with him. You know what I mean? And. You know, he helps me with my math. I actually know now, like, what two plus two is. So it's awesome. You're going to have to <laughs> send me those uh, numbers, too. I'm trying to crunch it myself. Um, yeah, you guys, exactly. You guys are touring Canada and the States. And what I find is really interesting is um, it's almost a 50% um, equal um, in each country. I think you do nine shows in Canada and probably 12 or 13 in the States, which is extremely unique um in my opinion um is there a reason you're doing so many shows in canada is it because of your definite connection with canadians and canadian musicians um no, or your reception I, you know it's it's really weird because um you know obviously i've done shows in like montreal ottawa uh the toronto area london uh all that stuff but I did one show at a place called the firehouse in Alberta, probably four or five years ago, six years ago, but I've never played Vancouver. I've never done, I, 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 I've never done one show in Vancouver with any of the bands that I've been in. So I'm looking forward to it. And in all honesty, like we, we've got this new record out the best of and uh, the tour uh was pretty much set up when i walked into the room um you know management said hey we got this new record coming out and uh the best of and here's where we're we're you know we're gonna we're gonna start our tour a couple shows in uh one in pennsylvania one in new jersey then we head up north and we go across canada and down the west coast Hopefully next year we'll hit more places in the United States because everybody's clamoring for Dead Daisy shows. Right. Uh, right. But um, I'm just excited, man. Like there's parts of Canada I've never seen before. I've never stepped foot in. So I'm uh, I'm excited about it. It Should be fun. um, I'm assuming, but I shouldn't assume. Is it going to be similar to um, Air Force One? Is uh, David flying the shows or are you guys um busing for the majority um i you know honestly buddy i i I have no idea uh i'm sure like we're doing um you know we're doing montreal we're doing ottawa we're doing uh toronto london uh kitchener uh so they're they're all pretty short yeah uh drive so i imagine we'll do a bus, I guess. I, I, I couldn't even tell you at this point. Uh, you know, but I'm just a singer, dude. I just show up and people point and go, just go through that door right there. And yeah, yeah. 
So I don't, I don't, I couldn't tell you. Okay. So getting back to uh, the Canadian thing, I mean, I have a lot of American viewers, so I'm not leaving you guys out, but I need to ask, is there any talk of um, an opening act for your Canadian shows? I know you're very tight with a lot of Canadian musicians, uh, the Killer Dwarfs for one. Yeah. Um. I, I again, management. I, this is the thing that a lot of the fans ask me. They ask me a couple questions. They one one is, you know, why do you not play in my city? <laughs> and I, I like I kid with them. I laugh. I go if if I got if I'm gonna play your city, I need to be invited by a promoter in your city. Like it's not like I'm driving around America and Canada in a van going. Well, that looks like a good place to play. Let's just play right. there. Um, that's one. And number two, like every, uh, all the shows that I do, I, I even next week, I'm going to be in, uh, I'm going to be in Montreal, uh, with my acoustic shows. I'm going to be in Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto in the next week or two. And so I get all these people go, Hey dude, you know, how about, can I open for you? Oh, okay. And, you know, again, it's really up to the promoters because they know who's going to also help sell tickets. Right. Right. Um, you know, so they may have, uh, you know, uh, I think in the um, Toronto show or t yeah, the Toronto show I'm doing uh, there's, I believe Russ uh, dwarf is playing with me. Nice. And then, uh, I can't remember his name. I'm having a brain fart. I apologize. But um, one of the guys from Talis, the band Talis, his son is now playing music. So he's opening. And and uh, they just told me, like, hey, dude, we're going to come. Here's who's opening for you. Uh, obviously, because they help sell tickets. Right. Uh, so I really have nothing to do with a lot of that stuff. Same with the Daisies. Um I don't think we're bringing uh, an opening act with us. Uh, it's not like a, a double bill thing. Mm -hmm. So it'll probably be at the mercy of whoever the promoter is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you want to open the show, go to your local promoter and talk to them and ask them if you can open the show. Right on. Well, I, I appreciate that uh, clearing it up because um, a lot of um, people, myself, I'm a little bit more in the industry a little bit just because I'm more of a fan, but I, I talk to you guys. Um, we we don't really realize um, how much the uh, talent is um, on the sidelines from uh, the promoters, right? Yeah, it's it's. Look at the end of the day, the promoters will you know they 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 bring in a band like the Dead Daisies. We do our thing, and then what they're looking at is you know the promoters are looking at the bottom line. How many people are we going to get into the building on that night? Okay, so we got the dead daisies. It should be a great night, but let's just be certain and whatever. Maybe they'll maybe pull a, some local band that actually has a really good draw in that, that area. And they'll bring them in just to make sure that there's no tickets left. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the bands don't really... Uh, the bands don't really know, like, you know, they don't really have much say in that. You know what I mean? It's, it's all, it's all about the promoter. Right. So. Right. Um, I won't keep you much longer, John, um, because I know you have a show tonight. There's a couple things I should ask. Uh, obviously, um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Okay. Subscribe to my channel as uh crabby says, or he's going to kick your ass. Isn't that right? Yes. I will come to I will come to your house with a six pack of Labatt's and beat you with it. You don't want to waste. <laughs> no, I'm. I didn't say they'd be open. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and and obviously you you're um what no here's like two more things. Um, is there any uh talk yet about a new uh, Daisy's uh album? Not a compilation, but new material. Are you writing? Are you talking about the possibility? Yeah, we we've we've been talking about it, but at this point, buddy, like it's been three or four years since I was in the band. Um, you know, we did get together about a month ago for a week, 
and it was like we didn't miss a beat. Like I walked in, uh, we immediately started joking with each other and fucking with each other and all this other shit. So uh, the, by the end of the week, the music was sounding really good. But on, honestly, there was a lot of songs that they hadn't done, even with Glenn. Like they, there, there was a lot of tunes like, uh, for example, Song and a Prayer or Make Some Noise. Mm-hmm. They didn't do it. We had to kind of sit down and relearn them again. Right. Um, you know, but w- right now the main concern is we got the best of coming out. It's already available for pre-sale. Uh, I believe I, I, I'm, I think the date, the release date is August 18th. Don't, don't, uh, you might want to correct me on that. Okay. Um, but the, our main concern is just putting a kick ass set together Mm -hmm. and just having some fun getting out. And, uh, again, like there's a bunch of places in Canada we've never been to before. Like Sault Ste. Marie. What now? Like Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. We, well, we did, uh, I, I, I want to say we did Toronto and maybe Montreal Mm -hmm. and, the, or and Ottawa, but now we're doing a bunch of other places that we've never played before. So we're going to be turning uh, a, a hopefully a lot of new people onto the Dead Daisies, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we just want to put a kick ass set together so everybody walks out and has a great time. Right. So right. and I know you will, John. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, just because a lot of. Um, the viewers would email and say, why didn't you ask, blah, blah, blah. You've, you're obviously uh, in Motley Crue and Jesus. It's been, what, 25 years? Longer than that, buddy. It's almost 30. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, what's going on with the crew right now? Do you have any comment? And if not, I understand. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to plead the fifth. I don't want to talk. I, I, I don't want to get involved in their bullshit. But I will say this. Nothing surprises me with that band. Right on. Hey, John, thanks a lot for your time. I'll put the links to all the shows. If I can make it to one of the shows in Southern Ontario, I'll uh, definitely send you an email so I can uh, meet you and um, meet the band. And uh, I know you guys are going to have a great tour. I I hope so, buddy. All right. Take care, my friend. All right, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.